Are you ready to build? Hey there, welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. Today I'm here with my good friend George and we're going to build a workbench. Now I thought this would be a great project or we thought it would be a great project because this is something that's like a foundation or a gateway. From here, once you have this built, you can do all sorts of other projects. Uh, so tell us about uh, what you're excited for today. Well, I don't really have any background in woodworking and uh, really interested in getting into building. So uh, I'm excited essentially to have this basic set of tools and a workbench to get started with a lot of other projects in the future. So thanks for coming over, Pete, and helping me with this today. You bet. Well, I think you're going to get a lot of use out of this. Great. So let's get started. All right. We started out by measuring and cutting each of the 4x4 four four legs for the workbench. Use a tape measure, a pencil, and saw for this process. A speed square is also handy for this project, and it's something I'm going to have George pick up on the next trip to the hardware store. We used a circular saw to make the cuts in today's project, and you'll need to make a cut from the top and bottom to get through the entire board. If you have a miter saw, it makes the cuts even easier. Next, we cut the 2x4 boards to frame out the workbench. Always remember to measure twice and cut once. To get the measurement, you can download the free plans over at DIYPete.com forward slash workbench. Use a sander to quickly remove rough edges on the ends before assembling the frame. Next, lay out the boards with a leg in each corner. We'll be attaching the 2x4 boards that will support the top of the bench. Pre-drill and then use about three wood screws at each attachment point. We didn't use glue just in case it ever needed to be disassembled, but use a combination of glue and wood screws to strengthen each joint if you'd like. Attach the side 2x4s first. The ends of the 2x4 will be flush with the 4x4. Once the first side is complete, you can measure between the 4x4s on the top and bottom to check that they are square and the same distance apart. You can match the second side up as a template to help line up all the boards, and a square is helpful for this process if you have one. Then connect the front and back 2x4s. They'll overlap the 4x4s a bit and cover the ends of the side 2x4s nicely. Next, we'll frame out the bottom side, which will be close to the floor when it's flipped right side up. The front board will be placed on the inner side of the legs to give you a little extra room for your feet when you're working. And I like to use clamps for this process just to make holding up the boards a bit easier. I'm actually using jack clamps, which are made in my hometown of Bozeman, Montana. The back board will be placed on the outside of the back legs and butt up against the wall. Then attach each of the shorter sideboards. Attach a couple center supports on both the top and bottom parts of the frame to help support the plywood and prevent it from sagging. Pre-drill and put two screws in both from the front and the back side. Next, attach optional locking caster wheels to the bottom side of each leg. Pre-drill and then attach using wood screws. You'll want to use small washers to ensure the screw catches the plate and creates a secure connection. Continue attaching the wheels until all four are on and ready to roll. Next, we'll cut the plywood down to size for the top of the workbench. Measure and mark the width and length in multiple spots where the cut will be made. Then, connect the marks using a straight edge. Line up your circular saw and cut just to the outside of the line. You can use the newly assembled frame as a work surface to help make the cut. Slowly work your way down the board so you have a good view of the line and so you're comfortable while making the cut. Have a second person to help in handling the plywood during the process. Next, cut the length of the plywood down to size. You can see George is catching on quickly and doing a great job making the cuts. Attach the plywood top by pre-drilling and then using shorter wood screws. We put a screw about every 10 inches around the perimeter of the workbench. Take your time and work around all four sides until it looks and feels secure. Then cut the lower shelf. Since we wanted a 30 inch top and 25 inch shelf, we had to use two sheets of plywood, but if a 24 inch top is big enough for your needs, you could cut both the top and lower shelf out of one sheet and save some money. You just need to modify the plans a bit to make it work. Put the lower shelf in place and attach it using wood screws. Make sure it lines up nicely in all four corners, then pre-drill and attach the board. Sand any rough spots and over screw holes. I like to slightly round the edges of the plywood and the corners of the workbench. We used 220 grit sandpaper for this process. 
Before staining the project, I'd recommend testing the stain out on a scrap piece of wood before staining the entire project. George picked the gunstock stain from Minwax. Grab a couple old rags and stain all surfaces of the workbench. This process goes pretty quick, especially with two people, and I'd recommend one to two coats. You can use a brush to get stain in some of the hard to reach areas and the screw holes. Once the stain is dry, apply two coats of polyurethane to help give your bench a nice looking and a durable finish. Let the polyurethane dry between coats and sand as needed. Lastly, attach any accessories you'd like to jazz up your brand new workbench. George wanted a bottle opener to celebrate a cold one after we completed the build. All right, thanks so much for tuning in to DIY Projects with Pete. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and that it inspires you to build your own workbench. For the complete tutorial, head over to DIYPete.com forward slash workbench. And George, what'd you think today? Honestly, Pete, this was a heck of a lot easier and faster to build than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a lot of fun using the power tools and they were less intimidating than uh, I thought as well. Good. So. Well, George, I think you did a great job and this is going to be an excellent gateway to all sorts of other projects you're going to be building. Awesome. In that case, do you have any uh, open positions at <laughs> DIYP.com? Mm. You know what? I think we need a shop. Cleaner. All right. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Best of luck with your projects and cheers from Montana. If you're looking for more basic DIY projects and inspiration, please subscribe to the channel and check out DIY tutorials like the TV console by clicking on the thumbnail. Cheers.